If you've ever passed near a paving construction site, you've surely noticed a huge machine, usually yellow or orange, that moves slowly and carries a steel cylinder in the front or rear. This equipment is the road roller. At first glance, it may seem that it only serves to crush the ground with its weight, but in fact, the roller's operation is much more sophisticated and plays a crucial role in practically any infrastructure project. Without it, roads wouldn't last even a few months, parking lots would quickly be full of potholes, and even simple sidewalks wouldn't withstand daily use. The road roller works on a basic principle of physics, applying pressure to loose particles to reduce the voids between them. Whenever you look at land before it is compacted, no matter how firm it may seem, it has hidden air spaces between grains of sand, fragments of stone, or even pieces of clay. These spaces represent weakness. When a heavy weight passes over, that soil moves, sinks, or cracks. Compaction exists precisely to eliminate these spaces and transform a loose surface into a solid, dense, and stable base. That's why the roller is essential before placing asphalt, concrete, or any other final layer. In practice, the main star is the drum, that giant cylinder that can be either in the front or back of the machine. It rotates as the roller moves forward and transmits pressure directly to the soil. But just the weight alone, in many cases, is not enough to achieve the required density. That's where vibration comes in. Many rollers are called vibratory because they have internal systems that make the drum vibrate thousands of times per minute. This vibration is powerful because it not only presses, but also makes the particles rearrange themselves, filling the voids between them. It's like shaking a jar of rice. The grains settle better and the volume decreases. The work of a roller is done in successive passes. The operator needs to cover the entire area several times, always overlapping part of the previous path. This process ensures there are no flaws or less compacted areas. Speed is also controlled. If the operator moves too fast, the drum won't have enough time to apply the necessary pressure. If too slow, it can cause overcompaction or even waste time and fuel. Everything is planned according to technical standards that indicate how many passes, the vibration frequency, and even the ideal weight of the machine for each type of material. What also changes is the type of roller used in each situation. There's the smooth, vibratory roller, the most common one, with a completely uniform drum used for finishing asphalt and granular soils. There's the sheep's foot roller, which has protrusions shaped like pins, ideal for clay eye soils because it penetrates deeper and ensures compaction in inner layers. There's also the pneumatic roller, which instead of a drum has several heavy tires. This model is excellent for asphalt mixtures that need uniform compaction without causing cracks. The curious thing is that despite seeming like a simple machine, the roller is the result of centuries of evolution. The first records of using rollers for compaction date back centuries in rudimentary versions pulled by animals. Later came steam rollers, which became famous in the 19th century and were widely used on roads and railways. Today, modern models are equipped with powerful diesel engines, advanced hydraulic systems, and even electronic sensors that monitor the degree of compaction in real time. This allows the operator to know when the soil has reached the ideal density, avoiding wasted time and ensuring quality. This level of sophistication is necessary because compaction is a decisive process for the durability of any project. A road, for example, is made up of several layers. The base needs to be well compacted to support traffic and prevent the asphalt from giving way. If that base isn't firm, the asphalt may look good in the first few days, but potholes, cracks, and depressions will soon appear. The same applies to airports, ports, parking lots, or even small sidewalks. Without compaction, there is no resistance. Another impressive detail is the weight of these machines. A roller can range from a few tons to giant models with more than 20 tons. This weight is almost entirely transmitted to the drum, which concentrates the pressure on the soil. To give you an idea, when the drum vibrates, it can generate pressure capable of reaching soil layers several centimeters deep. It is this force that ensures efficient compaction, but the roller doesn't work alone. On large projects, it is part of a true orchestra of machines. First, tractors and excavators do the earth moving. Then, the grader adjusts the terrain. Next, the roller comes into action to compact the base. Only after that is the asphalt spread by the paver, and again the roller passes to ensure the final finish. It is a sequence of carefully planned steps, and each one depends on the other to work correctly. The operator's job is more technical than it seems. He must choose the correct operating mode, whether to use vibration or just wait, whether the pass will be fast or slow, and what movement pattern to follow. There are cases where vibration must be turned off, such as in very fragile soils, or in areas near buildings that could suffer cracks from the shaking. In these cases, the operator relies only on the drum's static weight. It's a balance between strength and care, requiring experience to do the job properly. And for you who are following along up to here, this is a great time to subscribe to the channel. 
That way you won't miss any new videos about machines, engineering, and curiosities from the world of construction. Just click down below quickly and also activate the bell to receive notifications. After understanding the importance of compaction and the role the roller plays in projects, it's worth diving even deeper into how this machine works. The interesting thing is that its job isn't just to crush the soil. There's a whole science behind it, linked to soil mechanics and civil engineering. When the drum presses and vibrates, it reduces the soil's permeability, meaning the ability it would have to let water pass. This is essential because in loose soils, water infiltrates easily, washes away particles, and creates instability. In well-compacted soils, water finds it hard to enter, and this greatly increases the durability of the structure built on top. Another fundamental characteristic is resistance. Poorly compacted soil has low resistance and cannot withstand heavy loads without deforming. That's what happens when a road is built without this step. The weight of vehicles sinks the soil, the asphalt gives way, and the famous potholes appear. On the other hand, when compaction is well done, resistance increases so much that the same soil can withstand tons of pressure per square meter without significant deformation. It's like transforming a soft, void-filled ground into a rigid, firm surface. In addition, compaction influences the uniformity of the surface itself. If an area is compacted unevenly, sooner or later deformations will appear. These can be ripples on roads, uneven sidewalks, or flaws in parking lot pavement. That's why engineers define pass standards and check with measuring equipment whether compaction is truly uniform. Today, many modern rollers are equipped with onboard systems that already perform this measurement in real time. The operation of the vibratory system is also a fascinating point. It's based on eccentric weights that spin at high speed inside the drum. This spinning generates a centrifugal force that makes the drum vibrate. Depending on the model, the operator can control both the frequency and amplitude of vibration. Frequency is the number of vibrations per second, while amplitude is the intensity of each vibration. This adjustment allows the machine to adapt to different soils. Harder soils need higher amplitude vibrations, while more fragile soils require lighter vibrations. But it's not just the drum that can vary. The machine's structure itself changes depending on the application. There are small rollers used in urban works, sidewalks, and small repairs. These models can even be compact enough to fit in narrow streets, but they're still powerful. On the other hand, in large-scale works like highways or dams, rollers can reach gigantic dimensions with wide drums and weights over 20 tons. Some even have dual drive, meaning both the drum and the rear wheels are powered, increasing the machine's force and grip on sloped or difficult terrain. Another important aspect is safety. Since they are heavy machines that work in busy environments, rollers are equipped with reinforced cabins, vibration protection systems for the operator, and ergonomic controls. Some modern models even offer air conditioning and electronic monitoring systems, making the job more comfortable and safe. After all, an operator may spend hours at a time driving the machine over large areas, and comfort directly influences the quality of the work. One point that often goes unnoticed is how the roller interacts with the weather. On rainy days, for example, compaction can be affected. Excess water in the soil loosens the particles and makes the process harder. On the other hand, soils that are too dry can also be problematic, requiring moistening before compaction. The operator, along with the engineering team, needs to constantly assess ground conditions and decide the right moment to run the machine. This shows that compaction isn't just brute force, but also strategy and technique. And the truth is that the presence of a roller at any project is a synonym for quality. There's no well-built pavement without proper compaction. In airports, for example, runways need to withstand the impact of airplanes weighing hundreds of tons during takeoffs and landings. This resistance can only be guaranteed with well-compacted layers. The same goes for roads that receive heavy truck traffic or for dam projects where compaction prevents infiltrations that could compromise the structure. Now, after talking so much about how the roller works on the outside and in the project process, here comes the big curiosity. What's inside the drum? Many people imagine that the huge cylinder is just a solid steel block. Others think it's completely hollow, but the truth is much more interesting. Inside the drum of a vibratory roller, there are complex systems. The main one is the set of eccentric weights that spin at high speed to generate vibrations. These weights aren't centered, and that's precisely why they cause the constant wobble that makes the drum vibrate. They're powered by hydraulic motors, which receive energy from the machine's main engine. In addition, some drums can be filled with extra materials like water or sand to increase weight, 
This is done through internal compartments that allow adding or removing material as needed. It's as if the machine could be tuned to become lighter or heavier, depending on the type of soil being worked on. This flexibility is extremely useful in projects that go through varied terrains. Therefore, inside that huge drum, there is much more than just iron. There is precision engineering, vibration mechanisms, weight adjustment compartments, and hydraulic systems working together to transform force into efficient compaction. It's a mix of simplicity and sophistication. On the outside, it looks like just a cylinder. On the inside, it's a true mechanical heart that makes all the difference in a project. And that's what makes the roller so fascinating. It takes a basic principle, compressing particles, and applies it on a grand scale with technology, strength, and intelligence. When you see a roller slowly passing over asphalt, know that an invisible but essential job is happening there. Each pass guarantees years of durability for the road, each vibration increases the soil's resistance, and each internal adjustment ensures perfect compaction. For all these reasons, the next time you come across a road roller, look at it with different eyes. It's not just a heavy machine moving slowly. It's the result of years of evolution, engineering calculations, and applied technology so we can drive safely, walk on firm sidewalks, and use structures that truly withstand time. And inside that drum, there is much more than iron. There lies the secret of the strength of our roads. And before finishing, take this chance to subscribe to the channel right now. That way, you'll keep learning about how amazing machines like this work and discover curiosities that few people know. Click down below, leave your like, and share the video so more people understand the importance of this machine that silently sustains the world we live in.